So today I'm investigating Beethoven's uh, daily routine and how he worked. And basically he woke up with the sun, uh, had a coffee as breakfast, and he wanted to have always 60 beans in his coffee. He was very careful with this. I don't have this problem. I have Nespresso, but I'm a bit different. I always look that I have um, a very low coffee in coffee because I don't like strong coffee. So that's the similarity I have with Beethoven. It's very limited there. So after his breakfast, um, after waking up with sunrise and having his coffee, Beethoven basically practiced uh, and composed, probably more mostly composed until two. And he had um, a lot of breaks or some breaks going for a walk because he needed this kind of nature inspiration and relaxing a bit and uh, having fresh air, which I understand I'm doing this a bit too sometimes. After practicing or in between practicing, I also need to go a bit out and have fresh air. And he always had his little book with him to write down some ideas when they came to him. And that's something I can relate to because when I'm actually basically always, I'm always having music in my head and uh, as well as I'm walking, or uh, sitting somewhere. If I'm not talking or doing something actively, I always have music in my head that I'm hearing. And Beethoven must have this, having his own melodies in his head and composing like this and then writing down some melodies and then polishing them or improving them at the piano later. But um, interesting thing is he was a bit obsessed with washing and he was actually a very messy guy. I remember reading uh, or Bernstein, Bernstein saying that it was interesting to notice that Beethoven was such a messy guy having sometimes food on his piano for days that they were like smelling and having a big chaos of paper and stuff everywhere in his apartment was on his piano and so the contrast of being such a messy person and then in his music being so well organized and every every having every work um, finished on such a high level um, the contrast was quite interesting to notice like I'm I'm not really a messy person I mean you can see my piano is always quite clean I'm not a, I'm a bit I'm very organized in life but then cannot uh, tell I'm very very organized in practicing actually maybe I'm even less uh, so I guess Beethoven was prioritizing music this was everything was all his energy when focus was there and for the rest he just didn't care about anything so his washing habits was quite strange too that this the student is describing this he was apparently used to wash himself his hand his hands and head and putting water over his head in his apartment without being careful if the water was on the ground or something so he was not in a bathtub he, he was just on the sink probably and washing his head and his head and then singing at the same time and then coming back to compose and having this several times uh, a day at the point that water would sink into the floors and get to the neighbors and the neighbors would complain about this and of course the landlords would create some problem too and then I remember I saw a documentary where they explained that one of the um, landlord he had because he moved a lot because of this problem if, if, if I got this right one of the landlord actually was um, understanding that Beethoven was a genius and was a bit a special guy and actually uh, authorized him to do this and told the neighbors they should uh, live with it or something also he was playing piano singing screaming like living his life in his apartment with music and this might have disturb the neighbors too I guess so he was a bit like that's uh, an interesting point right? and why is this an interesting point this this washing habit is he was uh, getting sick very often because of this because he had a wet head he didn't dry his hair and then he was going outside for a walk and didn't really care if he was dressed uh, warm enough since he was a bit clumsy on the on this side and then probably caught colds very often and I'm sure or I think I even read this but I'm, I'm not 100% sure worth noticing or if you know write me in the comments he probably got a cold that didn't really um, heal and that's what started his ear problem so he had a ear infection that he didn't um, care about he didn't went to the doctor it got worse and then or it healed more or less and then he started to have this infection that created his earring diminishing so he kind of is kind of responsible of his ear problem and became in death later now we can say lucky for us because that's what created his music the late music of Beethoven is a complete different music because he could not hear it anymore and when you are 
not hearing well so he was not 100% deaf but he was like losing I don't know maybe 90% of his hearing in the beginning uh, at the end and this started when he was around 27 so quite young now I think he died with 50 something so at the end at the end he was not hearing anymore and when he was my age I'm 40 he was probably doing almost nothing but he could still feel the very low keys very low notes and a very high pitch and if you notice his sonatas the more you go at the end of his sonatas the more he goes to the extreme
So to take an example, let's say the take a famous sonata, the number eight pathetic, which is a quite early sonata. His melody is here. So it's very central and he will stay more or less there the whole movement. Um, if you go to later sonatas, for example, the let's take the 31, so that's one before the last. If you take this one, for example, he's starting already here. Then he goes a bit in this direction, moving a bit. But then if you take, for example, the slow movement, which compare the slow movement with the pathetic, so... Let's say his last sonata, his 32, is finishing almost exclusively in, in the extremes. So let's take another edition, Henley, it's better. If you go towards the end, let's say, see how it's finishing. And then there is this here where it's staying here. like having this extreme here, this extreme here, he's not like staying in the middle where, like he did before. So apparently that's something that shaped Beethoven um, work is the fact that he became deaf. So he was looking for other sonorities, other sound. And um, as I said before, it's lucky for us, he had this sickness. Now it must have been very traumatic for him because I remember being once sick and um, they found out I had a skin disease. It's not um, uh, terrible stuff. It's actually nothing uh, bad, it's nothing happening. But um, I was quite disturbed by this and scared and um, it, it, it kind of can change your life if you know you have a disease for your all your life and it will affect your life you are you have this period where you get a bit depressed about it it's also scary you don't know what will happen you know then you don't know if you will live or if you will die from this and um, i can very much uh, imagine beethoven must have been super stressed by this and um, he apparently also ignored it for a long time could not really face it probably because he, he and he didn't notice directly that he was becoming deaf um it's when he slowly noticed that he was not hearing as good as other people and then as a musician if you think it's like if you would not be able to play anymore if you are not able to hear anymore it's a, it's a big stress now luckily he was a composer he was an accomplished musician so he didn't really need to hear the music to compose because you hear stuff in your head and you just put them on paper and if you have absolute pitch that's absolutely no problem um, he also knew the sounds of instrument combined because he had this experience before of hearing orchestra he studied the orchestration so he knew which combination of sound works but uh, still like it, the problem that it creates it he was not able to perform anymore at, at a certain point or he was not able to conduct anymore because he could not hear the orchestra and there was also this this thing i read somewhere or someone was telling that he finished conducting a symphony but not hearing the orchestra but i think the orchestra was faking they were following him and actually they were not really really looking at him they were trying to play together the orchestra was finished playing the symphony was finished and he was still conducting because they were this not synchronized anymore the public was already applauding the symphony and he didn't notice and someone came and turned him and to face the public to see that he public was applauding and uh, that's probably one of the moments where he noticed oh it's really getting uh, too far i'm losing control of this which must have been also difficult to admit for him he was hiding it from people for a long time from himself too so yeah tragic thing but it made one of the greatest musicians of all time so one of the famous sonata of beethoven is this moonlight sonata which i think the title don't really reflect it's a title that uh, an editor gave Beethoven didn't give this title. He gives uh, the title to Pathetic, for example, but not to Moonlight. So that's the number 14. And I think this is more or less the period where Beethoven started realizing his hearing was going away. And I think this sadness of the beginning is more or less, we should actually call it the deafness sonata or the depression sonata. <laughs>
Beethoven was a very um, quite sad, sad person actually. He was very often sad about relationships he had with people because he was also himself a quite complicated person. He was angry very often. Uh, he fighted with a lot of people. He didn't have an uh, easy childhood because his father was beating him, waking up in the night to play piano for his piano teacher and uh, kind of forcing him to practice and stuff. And he was an alcoholic also, his father. Uh, Beethoven luckily didn't become one. He was drinking alcohol but in reasonable uh, amounts and this probably shaped also his bit awkward social behavior and I also remember he was um, being bullied at school because he, he had different clothes or something like this and he was not very social too. So it, his social stuff always be, stayed a problem, he had problem coming along with people and um, but he also, also had this kind of positive hope. Um, like he was always, well, in a sonata you have a s slow movement like this one that is sad and it's finishing with a quite active movement, the last one. Now, is this an angry movement or is this like a more, like, let's not stay sad and be positive? That's up to you, everyone can understand what he wants in music, actually, that's the beauty of music. I think also like his ninth symphony, his late last symphony is um, with the Ode to Joy, is a good sign of his hope for humans, humanity, people. There is this very sad ending uh, where with his nephew where he became a very ugly person, where he was really being mean. But I think also that's because he was lacking having a child and he was sad not having ch children. He always wanted to marry someone but didn't manage because he was a musician, he was poor, he was not... He was successful and recognized by everyone as a genius, but um, he wanted to marry a rich woman from, again, from aristocracy and um, this persons didn't or couldn't marry with him because he was not from the same class, which always created um, great sadness for Beethoven. Now there is also the speculation that he chose such women because he knew they were out of reach and probably he could then focus on composition. So maybe this was an unconscious thing that Beethoven did, who knows? But yeah, anyway, he wanted to marry, he wanted to have children, he wanted to have love and everything and be happy like everyone and never managed. And that's maybe what created this uh, very dark uh, story at the end of his life with his nephew that he wanted to keep from his sister, uh, from the, his sister-in-law. So the was the son of his brother. His brother died and then he wanted to take care of this boy and he kind of traumatized everyone and the boy too so yeah, it's a special person like very uh, extreme person in everything and that's something you find in his music too like there is one thing I always notice in Beethoven music is this sudden accent so you have a nice melody something very calm and then comes an accent that's very aggressive and very sudden and I think that's a reflection of his personality too you have this in um, for example the second movement of the Moonshine Sonata you have this forte piano everywhere so you have like And it's typically Beethoven, you have this everywhere in his music, and of course you have it there too. This is quite aggressive and, and uh, percussive. It's also why the Beethoven music is so loved probably, because it's, it's a very active percussive music. It's not a um, boring music, very, never a boring music. Yeah, so uh, like I said, Beethoven was uh, walking in the woods or just having uh, outside walks to think about his music, to refresh a bit practicing and composing, which I can relate because it's something I like to do too. So Beethoven was practicing until uh, composing until two, then he had a lunch at around two or three, and after this he went for a great, for a long walk and uh, then he went sometimes have a beer in a cafe or in a bar uh, he was sometimes invited in the evening or he was eating some dry bread in the evening of some leftovers from lunch he actually didn't compose in the evening he didn't like this he went and uh, he never went to sleep later than 10 so actually he had a good night of sleep yeah so composing eight hours a day in the summer he was composing longer because the day starts 30 and in the winter it starts at 8 so from 8 to 2 it makes 6 hours in the winter 8 hours so he was composing a bit more no the opposite in the summer 8 hours in the winter 6 hours and he was more productive in the summer apparently because he was waking up more early so I hope you enjoyed the video I will continue this series I find it interesting myself like let me know in the comments if you want some other composers yeah if I have more requests I will maybe do it and uh, see you next video.